What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a full comparison between last year's iPhone 12 Pro and this year's new iPhone 13 Pro. Now, obviously, this year's iPhones didn't see any huge new changes or features. It's sort of an S year more than anything, but the new iPhone 13 Pro is still an upgrade of sorts, and I'm gonna talk about everything that's different, big and small, on this new phone. Also, if you're coming from an older iPhone, like the 11, the 10s or even something else, this comparison might also be helpful in swaying you towards the 12 Pro since it's obviously now a lot cheaper and it isn't too far off from the 13 anyway. Whatever the case may be, I hope this helps you decide which of these iPhones is right for you. So let's go ahead and get right into it. To start off, physically, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro are almost identical at first glance and Apple has actually used this same basic design for a number of years now. However, there are still a handful of little tweaks and differences worth mentioning. First, while the size of the 6.1 inch display remains the same, you might be able to tell that Apple has reduced the size of the notch on the iPhone 13 Pro for the very first time. It's now 20% smaller, mostly just not as wide across the top, but for as much as Apple highlighted this during their keynote presentation, it's barely noticeable. And the iPhone 13 Pro retains that very well-known notch display with all the Face ID sensors packed inside. The only other thing worth mentioning is that the earpiece is also a little different too. It's newly designed and positioned much higher, but again, just a minor visual change Everything else up front is identical on both these iPhones. Around back, the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro share the same frosted glass rear cover and stainless steel frame. The fit and finish are identical here. And the only thing that differs, obviously, is the color. We go from a darker Pacific blue to the lighter Sierra blue, but Apple adds a fresh new color almost every year, and that's obviously not a big deal. In the hand, these phones also almost feel the same. They share the same boxy, sharp profile, though the new iPhone 13 13 Pro is a little heavier by about 15 grams, and that is something you can feel when you hold it. The new phone is also a tiny bit thicker too, technically, though that's not as obvious. And you might think that since the overall form factor seems to be identical, that Apple might have just reused the same housing on the new iPhone 13 Pro, or that the new phone could at least fit in the iPhone 12 Pro accessories, like the cases. But unfortunately, that's not what we have here because of a couple other minor but slightly annoying physical changes. The first is the camera setup around back. The new 13 Pro has a larger camera module as a whole, which you can probably tell. It packs in larger lenses too, and it sticks out quite a bit farther, which might not be as obvious at first, but when you lay these phones flat on a table, you can see just how propped up the iPhone 13 Pro is by its new huge camera bump. The difference is really surprising. Of course, the whole camera system on the iPhone 13 Pro is different and improved, and I'll get into all that later but the bigger camera bump is something that's noticeable to say the least. And actually, even in the hand, the 13 Pro feels more top-heavy and uneven with all the additional mass around back. Apple also, for whatever reason, slightly altered the button placement on the new 13 Pro. So on the left side, the silent switch and volume buttons have been moved down by a few millimeters there, which you can see, and the SIM card tray actually moved up quite a bit too. On the right side, the power button shifted down just a little bit as well. And these slight alterations to the button placement are something I didn't notice at first. You guys actually pointed it out to me, which I appreciate. The lightning port, speaker, and mic holes are all the same, at least down below. But obviously, with all the other random physical changes, any cases or accessories specifically made for the iPhone 12 Pro likely won't fit properly with the iPhone 13 Pro, and that's sort of annoying. So let's now get into all the features and specs. And to kick things off, I just want to quickly mention that although this secondary earpiece speaker was sort of altered, like I explained earlier, to me, the out loud listening experience on both phones sounds nearly identical, and I didn't see any indication that Apple improved or otherwise changed the dual stereo speaker setup on the iPhone 13 Pro. For your viewing experience, this is the first big change and upgrade we get with the iPhone 13 Pro, and there's 
two specific things to talk about. On the surface, the general specs haven't changed much. Both phones have Apple's Super Retina XDR OLED panel with HDR10 support, and the 6.1 inch displays offer the same 2531 by 1170 resolution at about 460 pixels per inch. From a clarity standpoint, they offer identical sharpness. But the new iPhone 13 Pro now offers a brighter display, 1000 nits of brightness versus 800 on the iPhone 12 Pro. And it's sort of hard to tell on camera here, but in person at least, this is a noticeable difference. At max brightness, the iPhone 13 Pro looks brighter, and in my time using this phone so far, I've had a slightly easier time viewing things on screen outdoors in direct sunlight. Also, while Apple didn't necessarily mention this, I've personally found the new iPhone 13 Pro to be a little more colorful and contrasty. Colors are more saturated, blacks are a little deeper, perhaps the color profile has shifted a bit on the new phone, but to my eye there does seem to be a slight difference in the colors on screen. Lastly, and probably most importantly, the new iPhone 13 Pro's display is also now a high refresh rate panel. It's Apple's ProMotion 120Hz screen, which gives you a variable refresh rate based on what's being shown or what's being interacted with. And it may not be totally obvious at first, but this new high refresh rate screen is going to deliver a silky smooth experience, a more fluid look, and an overall more snappy and responsive feel. When you slow things down and look a little more closely, you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison that the iPhone 13 Pro is generally more smooth with its animations. It's less choppy compared to the 12 Pro, and the taps, touches, and swipes are more accurate and more closely follow where your finger is touching. In the grand scheme of phone features, this isn't new or revolutionary. Android phones, for example, even budget Android phones, have had high refresh rate displays for a couple of years now, but this feature is a first for the iPhone, and it's something I've personally been waiting for. And by the way, this ProMotion 120Hz display is only available on the Pro iPhones this year, so keep that in mind. All in all, the new display on the iPhone 13 Pro is one of the standout features for this new phone. In regards to performance, Apple has, of course, crammed in a new, more powerful chipset inside the iPhone 13 Pro. Last year, we had the A14 Bionic in the iPhone 12. This year, it's the A15 Bionic in the iPhone 13. And confusing number schemes aside, the new phone is objectively more powerful and more capable than ever before. And that's not a surprise. But with each new iPhone, over the last few years, I'd say, the difference in real-world speed, I think, has become less and less significant. With just your average everyday iOS app interactions, you probably won't see a difference in launch or load times. If anything, it's a fraction of a fraction of a second, just not substantial at all. And sometimes there's literally no difference whatsoever. So to be quite honest, this is an aspect of the iPhone 13 Pro that I personally don't consider worthy of an upgrade. If you have an older iPhone, sure, it's going to be a huge difference with either device here. But year over year, the speed increase is almost impossible to see now. And this isn't just on the easy everyday stuff. Even with games and more graphics heavy apps, the overall performance difference is just not as significant. You can jump into any game just as quickly, and in-game performance is flawless on both phones for the most part. And Apple didn't throw in any more RAM either this year. Both phones still get 6 gigs inside. And the iPhone 13 Pro still starts at 128 gigs of built-in storage too, just like last year. All in all, like I explained, the difference with the internal specs and real-world performance year over year continues to be less and less significant. And in my opinion, this year especially, you're just not going to see any worthwhile improvements in load times. It hasn't been the case for me at least, but let me know what you guys think about all that. The big sort of spec bump the iPhone 13 Pro did get, and this I think is the most worthwhile and something everyone will appreciate, is better battery life. Size-wise, the actual battery capacity has increased. We get a 3,095 milliamp battery inside, up from 2,815 milliamps on the iPhone 12 Pro. That's a good start already and in real world use, Apple says you can expect anywhere between an extra one to two hours of phone usage throughout the day, which I have to say is exactly what I've personally experienced. If you're not a particularly heavy user, you might even notice better results than me. The 13 Pro has a noticeable and significant boost in battery life and longevity over last year, and that's great to see. And actually, this isn't just for the iPhone 13 Pro. 
Pro. All the iPhone 13s this year get a battery boost. We unfortunately didn't get any charging speed increases or any other new power capabilities, but I'll take significantly better battery life anyway, and I do think this is a worthwhile improvement, specifically with the iPhone 13 Pro. Finally, let's jump back to the camera setups. And I think out of everything, this is what Apple spent the most time on during their keynote presentations with the iPhone 13s. And I'm gonna talk about the new features and real world results here a bit, but I'll have some dedicated camera comparison videos coming soon to go more in depth with this because it's really worth a whole video on its own. So spec wise, the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro have the same general setup. Triple lenses around back that consist of a 12 megapixel main shooter, 12 megapixel telephoto, and 12 megapixel ultra wide. But the sensors on the new iPhone 13 Pro's cameras are bigger than ever. And for starters, that's going to allow a ton more light into every shot and make low light and dark shots with every lens significantly better. Also, the telephoto lens on the 13 Pro comes with a few new capabilities. It's a three times optical zoom now up from two times optical on the 12 Pro. And that also means Portrait shots with the telephoto are gonna be a little different. You might need to take an additional step back when taking them. But the telephoto lens also doubles as a macro lens now as well for super up close pictures. It switches automatically when it senses a subject a few millimeters away. The 12 Pro can't really take any close up pictures. And to be honest, I don't really utilize macro lenses on any smartphones, but I guess this is a helpful add on for those very specific situations. There's two other new shooting modes on the 13 Pro. So the first is what Apple calls photographic styles, sort of a half filter, half preset that allows for certain looks for your shot, whether it be vibrant, warm, cool, or something else. And for video, Apple also added cinematic mode, which lets you take a sort of portrait video and can also quickly change focus from subject to subject automatically based on a scene. Beyond these changes and add-ons, most everything else inside the camera app on these iPhones is going to be the same. But with some side-by-side -side shots here, I think you'll be able to see that the iPhone 13 Pro does offer some upgrades and improvements with the results. The new phone can produce a shot that's sharper, clearer, and more detailed. I think that's pretty obvious even at first glance, and the lighting looks quite a bit better too. It doesn't really matter which lens you shoot with, I think you can see decent improvements across the board, and with low light and night mode shots especially, the difference is even more significant. Now, the iPhone 12 Pro obviously had a great camera setup already, and some of the changes on the 13 Pro might be more subjective, they could be good, they could be useful, it just depends on how you use your iPhone and what you value for the camera setups, but overall, there's no doubt that Apple probably spent a majority of their time and efforts fine-tuning this camera setup on the 13 Pro. So all in all, I think it's pretty obvious that this year's new iPhone 13 Pro is a marginal upgrade. You get a better display, of course, technically more powerful specs, better battery life, and big enhancements and add-ons to the camera. But if you have an iPhone 12 Pro, it's tough to justify, I think, jumping to the 13 Pro if you don't have some sort of upgrade deal or other easy, cheap way to get it. But if you have an older iPhone, the 13 Pro is definitely going to be worthwhile. At the same time though, the 12 Pro is now cheaper than ever. And sticking with that, I think, would be just as good. And you could save a ton of money in the process too. But what do you guys think about the new iPhone 13 Pro? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.